Welcome everybody to Our Green Acres and also welcome to my Christmas in July video. In today's video I'm going to feature over 15 fun Christmas projects and I'm also going to play some fun Christmas music to hopefully get us in the Christmas spirit during the summer season. These are a few of my favorite projects from last year's videos that I thought you might enjoy. These videos have the original voiceover, so all the details would be included. I hope y'all enjoy the video, and as always, I hope y'all get lots of Christmas ideas and inspiration. Now, I've been seeing how to make little um, wooden angels out of wooden spindles. So, I just basically took, I'm going to take a wooden bead, I'm going to, I found some little wings, and now you can find wings at different places in the Christmas section. Yeah, um, these I got at Dollar General, but I know a lot of times Hobby Lobby has them, but just pick the wings that will fit your, you know, your, your project the best, and I'm using a little spindle that I'm repurposing from a previous project, and these little spindles I got at a yard sale, they were a natural color, and I think they're more like a little craft spindle, so I'm pretty sure you can probably get these at Hobby Lobby, but I just chalk painted it, and I had distressed it, but I just glued it to my little wings, I glued on my little bead for her head, and I chalk painted it very lightly and sanded it just so it kind of blend in with my wings. I made her a little halo out of some lace and pearls. And then I'm just going to add a little lace around her neck with a pearl embellishment. This was a really easy little project, but I think she turned out so pretty. Okay, the next project is going to be a fun one. We're going to create, it's kind of like, I don't know, this is Pinterest inspired, but you can make a Christmas tree out of like junk um, uh, drawer pulls, hardware. So I'm going to take a scrap piece of board. This is a piece of a riser when we redid our stairs, going upstairs. And um, Ben always has scrap pieces of wood for me, so I just kind of tell him what size I want. He'll go out and look around. <laughs> but he did have to cut this one down a little bit to make it smaller to fit my project. But um, I went over it with my candle wax. You know, I chalk painted it, and then I went over it with my plastic scraper, and then I went over it too with a sanding block. I want a lot of distressing on this because I really want this to look really chipped and worn looking. And then you just want to take assorted uh, drawer pulls or whatever kind of little junk, um, kind of little metal pieces that you may have. And I don't know if y'all are like us, but we have little boxes <laughs> of just little little odds and ends of things that we use. And we just all throw it in, in, a, in a little box out in our um, work, work shed. So I just kind of went out there and I kind of, you know, dug around. And, you know, you can see there's kind of like a little gate latch. And then some of these are just drawer pulls. Now, a few of them, they were like a bronze color. And I did go over them and I chalk painted them just so they would kind of all be in the same color scheme. Now, if you want these to adhere to your wood permanently, you probably want to screw them, um, you know, from the front to the back or to the back to the front whichever way your drawer pulls are or whatever kind of hardware that you use for this project. But I just use very various w ones that I had and then I just kind of staggered them to kind of make the shape of a tree and then I'm just going to hot glue mine. Now here I'm going to show you different variations for a tree topper. You can use um, a totally dazzled embellishment because embellishment, you know I always have totally dazzled jewelry on hand for my projects. And then also here is a a drawer pull and I just gonna you know you can also use this for your tree topper this to me is such I love making projects that are very unique and have character and so this is how this turned out and then also you can add a little bow to it but there's so many ways that you can you know create this and, it, and it's fun just to go through some things that you may already have at home or if you're out thrifting you know, don't pass up those that old junky hardware or those little drawer pulls.
Now the next project, we're going to work on a little Dollar Tree item. Now I picked this little tinsel candy cane up last year, but they may have it again this year. A lot of times, you know, season to season, they'll carry some of the same product. You just want to very easily remove the tinsel. Once you get all the tinsel off of it, then I'm going to go around with some little clippers, and I'm going to go around, I'm going to clip all those little tabs, tabs off the edges. Because what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it, with some really chunky yarn and that'll what that way that'll make our yarn um you know twist around the little candy cane a little bit better so, so when we get those little tabs removed now i purchased this little chunky yarn at walmart i did some cone trees in a previous video and i'll link it down below but i love this yarn it's super chunky it's very soft and i love working with it so I'm just going to glue it on, get it started on the bottom of the little candy cane. Once you get it started, you just want to start wrapping it around. Now, I would only glued when I needed to. So once you get it started and you start wrapping, you really don't have to glue it because it's going to stay in place. And two, if you don't glue it, it gives you some room if you need to um, scrunch it down or kind of move it around to cover up that little red um, base, you can. Now, on the, when you get to the end, then you want to start gluing a little bit more because once you get to that little rounded um, tip of the candy cane, it gets a little bit um, tougher to wrap. So just add your glue as you need to, secure it at the end, and clip it off, and you've got a cute little little winter wonderland little candy cane. Now I'm going to embellish it with a with a bow, and I get a lot of questions about where I got this ribbon from because I feature it you know, on several of my projects, but this is ribbon that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. So, um, it's kind of a pinkish red. I love it. It's got those little frayed edges that I like. So, I'm just going to make a real simple loopy bow, add that to it, and now I got a cute little candy cane for $1. Now the next project is going to be a super fun one. Y'all just take some old vintage books. Whatever books you have on hand, you can buy them a lot of times. The libraries in your area, a lot of times will have a clearance area. I know my library offers books for like a quarter a piece. So, you know, go in. You're not going to damage your books in any way. All you want to do is you want to start with larger ones at the bottom. Open them up about halfway. And I use a another book for my actually for my stand for my tray and just start stacking them and then i just added a little star to the top and didn't even have to glue it so just another little idea of a way you can decorate and make a really pretty you know very unique little christmas tree for your home using some vintage books Now I'm going to show you how to make some really easy and inexpensive coffee filter trays. Now these are inspired by bottle brush trays. I love bottle brush trays and I usually pick them up wherever I see them. But I just took some coffee filters. I dipped them in some uh, leftover coffee to stain them. I did about 60. There's about 10 in each of these stacks. I set them up and I let them dry. It was cold here that day, so I actually I put them in my car. It was a sunny day and I just put them up in the dash of my car on a garbage bag and let them dry. Once they're dry, and then I just took a wood slice I had on hand, we drilled a little hole in the bottom, and then I just stuck a, a skewer. This is just a pack of skewers I picked up at Dollar Tree, and I just hot glued it down in that little hole. Also, to make the hole in your little wood slice or your base, you could also just take a nail and hammer a nail down in it just to get, you know, just a little bit of a groove, and then your skewer will probably stick down in it with some hot glue. But you just want to start putting your coffee filters on you your skewer stick and you just want to start shaping them and fluffing them just to form a tray and then as you go up and you're shaping it and forming it you want to kind of stagger 
now and make it a little bit smaller as it goes up. So I'm just cutting probably about a half inch off the edge of my coffee filters. I just fold them in half and I just cut some and now I'm just going to slide those down on the skewer stick and then I'm just going to scrunch them up. And like I say, you know, the bottom you want fuller and then as you go up the top, you just want to keep it staggered and make it smaller as it goes to the top. And you just want to keep doing the same thing until you get to the top of your skewer stick. And then once you get to the top uh, with your coffee filters and you've got it totally covered, then you just want to adhere it, it you know, just um, stick a little dab of glue at the top just to hold that one last filter down. And that's all it is. And these turned out so cute. Now, if you don't want to stain your coffee filters, there's, so, there's other options out there. They actually have brown coffee filters. I found these at Walmart, so they're already kind of brown and stained for you. Now, these aren't going to be as scrunched up as the ones that I've wet with the coffee. They're going to be a little bit, you know, of a, a smoother texture, so you're going to have to scrunch them up a little bit more. Now, this, I'm going to have to start stagger, staggering them a little bit earlier because they're not as, as scrunchy but I took one inch off of these and I'm going to work with the one inch until I, I feel like I need to stagger it some more and make it a little bit you know smaller and like I say you just work with it you shape it as you go up and then I'll cut some more off and if you need to cut more than an inch off you can you know go down to a half an inch so and then once you get to the top you do the same thing you just dab a little glue on it for the topper and I made, um, I've also made a white one. These were so easy and so quick to make. And y'all, I, I probably used between 40 to 50 coffee filters on each tray. And I think one pack of coffee filters, I think you get 100 to 150. So you can make several trays out of a pack of coffee filters. Okay, this project, I'm going to show y'all how to make a very easy stocking out of drop cloth. Now, my friends, Melissa and Dawn over junk and disorderly gals, make sure to go over and follow them on Instagram. They inspired me with these stockings. They make these, and I purchased a couple from them because they made theirs out of a muslin that was tea stained, and they were absolutely gorgeous, and I love these stockings. I know you've seen me feature them in some of my previous videos. Well, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make one out of drop cloth. I just took one I traced around it with two pieces of my drop cloth but you can use any fabric that you want and then I went on my sewing machine but you could also hot glue around this if you don't want to sew it um, this I always leave an inseam to where I can throw it in the washing machine and the dryer and it'll come out and it'll have these really frayed worn edges and then you'll just want to trim it up and then you've got a really cute little easy stocking. Now I've also got a new stencil and I purchased this from Etsy from Wall Cuts and I'm going to leave her link below. And also um, this is a great stencil y'all. You know it's got it's a big graphic but I'm just going to use the part that says Christmas. I'm going to go over it with my Jamie Ray Vintage Stencil Brush. I love it. And I'm going over it with some ink chalk paint and then just lift it off and look what a great little easy stocking. Now I think these would make great gifts. You know if you want to get, fill it up with some candies or maybe give somebody you know a bottle of wine or some sparkling um, juice or something like that in a bottle. I think these would make great little um you know gift wraps for those now to put a hanger on it i'm just taking a piece of drop cloth hem i'm just going to glue it together and then glue it in that corner and just press it down really good and you've got a really easy hanger now to hang my stockings this year i'm going to show y'all how i'm going to repurpose a couple of stocking hangers that i've had for many years you know they're pretty the way they are but i'm going to show you how we can just add a little shabby chic to them I'm going to spray paint them white, then I'm going to distress them with a little sandpaper around the edges. I'm going to add some more transfers, y'all. These are new. Make sure to go over and check out my friend Jackie over at Ruth and Ruby. I'll link her below, but she gives y'all a 10% discount, so make sure to get the discount code. But I'm going to use the traditional POTS transfer book. I'm just going to cut out, you know, little pieces that um, are, are small enough that'll fit on my little stocking hangers. I'm going to transfer these on with my scraper, and look what a great transformation these made. I love my little stocking hangers now, and I can't wait to hang my stockings on them.
Okay, the first project we're going to work on is going to be these little uh, ornament balls that I got at Dollar General last year. I got them on clearance after Christmas, and I think I paid 25 cents each for them because they were 75% off. So I just basically took the stick out of them, and I'm just going to rip off that little burlap trim and then just remove the fabric. It was real easy to remove, and if you had fabric that would cover this, you probably wouldn't even have to do this step. But I'm going to take some flower sack cloth. I'm going to go around with some, you know, something that I wanted to use as a circle template. In this, in my case, I just used a medium size um, plate, and that way it gave me a good uh, fabric um, circle for my for my ball to make sure it covered well, and also I'd have enough at the top that I could gather up. Now I'm going to go around a piece of lace, and I'm going to do the same thing because I'm going to make this double layer. I'm going to put the lace on the outside. And, um, and then you just want to put that around your ball and you want to gather it um, as tight as you can. And then we're going to tie it off at the top. And once you get it tied off, then you want to take it, you know, you want to pull it and you want to smooth it out as best you can. And then you can go in and you can embellish this any way you want to. These are so easy and so fun to make. And they make such great little unique ornaments for your tree. Christmas memories I've been working so much lately I can barely find the time to sleep Yeah, I spend my time running around Keeping people pleased But this is my favorite holiday It's a chance to start over new Cause I missed you so I'm letting go of everything but you these are the good times with you Baby, this year is just gonna be you and me Hang by Now the next one I'm gonna make, I'm gonna do the same thing to it. I'm gonna remove the fabric and the little twine wrap and then I'm gonna cover this one with a piece of drop cloth. I did the same thing. I traced around my plate. I got my circle form and I'm just gonna wrap it around the ball. We're gonna gather at the top and this one I'm gonna tie off with a piece of twine. You wanna tie it again really tight and then you just wanna pull it through and smooth it out as best you can. Now on this one, I'm gonna add a little bit to it. I'm gonna add a transfer design to it. And transferring fur onto fabric is so easy and it, and it works really well. So I'm gonna take, um, and you also wanna trim the ends once you get it finished. You wanna give it a little haircut and just trim it down so it'll be fluffy and it'll kinda of have that frayed look. Now the graphics I'm going to use for this, I'm going to link down in my description box. I purchased this from Jackie over at Ruth and Ruby, and she always offers my viewers a 10% discount. So make sure to go to my description box and use her discount code and tell her I sent you. Now I'm going to take just a word off of that huge sheet, and I use this transfer sheet a lot. It's got a lot of design and graphics on it, and I just took the word Paris, I transferred it on, and look how what a cute little ornament this one made. Making our Christmas memories, oh, and I've been longing to hold you close, forget about everyone else, isn't this how it's supposed to be? Now we're going to take some solo wood flowers. Now, y'all, I have done several videos on the solo wood flowers and made several projects with these. I love working with these, and I'm going to leave a link down in my description box to go out and shop their website. If you don't have any of their wood flowers, I highly recommend them. I've used these in so many projects. But we're going to make a couple of Christmas trees out of them today. And I'll coffee stain mine, and some of them I'm going to leave natural, but you can make your own paint or dime any color you want and sola also sells the the dye for them so you can do them any color you want but i, I want to go with more of that vintage look but you just want to take a frame and you want to cut down a piece of dollar tree poster board to fit the back of your frame to fit you know inside um, the, the glass part and then you can cover it with whatever fabric you want in my case i'm using a, a piece of coffee stained flower sack cloth and you just want to go around the edges and you just want to use some hot glue 
I'm sorry, on this one, I'm using drop cloth. On the second project, I'm going to show you with the flowers, I've used some flower sack cloth, but this is drop cloth. Now, I just go around, and I just arrange my flowers, you know, on my board before I go to hot glue them. Just kind of get a layout of how what they're going to fit and how many you want to do. In my case, I started out with five on the bottom, and then I just kind of staggered up, and, you know, I just went five, four, three, and then once I got at the top, I filled it in with some smaller flowers just to give it that Christmas tree shape. And, y'all, I think this turned out beautiful. And like I say, solo wood flowers, you can make all kinds of projects out of these. And they make great embellishments for any of your projects. Because, I, you know, as you can see, I embellished one of my Christmas ornaments I just made with some of them. So I love having these on hand to make projects out of. And I also want to add that you can recycle these flowers. I had previously made a pumpkin out of these, and I was actually able to remove them and reuse them for this project. So these flowers, actually, they're fragile and delicate, but they also, they hold up really well. So these I've recycled from a pumpkin project, and now I've made a Christmas tree out of them. I've been wrapping presents for you. I've been hanging marbles in the tree. And I've lit my house with Christmas lights So you should come back home to me And when we wake up in the morning I'm gonna play those carols that you love We'll be singing all the melodies Until the sun comes up These are the good times with you Baby, this year is just gonna be you and me Okay, this project is going to be a fun one. This is little Dollar Tree hats. They come five in a pack, and I bought these around 4th of July this summer. And as soon as I saw them, I had an idea of making snowman hats out of these for Christmas. So I was excited to pull these out of my Christmas decorations because that's where I had stuck them. And I I'd forgot, actually, I'd bought them back in the summer for, for this project. So anyway, you get five. Uh, I'm only going to do two for this um, to show you how they make cute little Santa hats, but I'm going to use the blue one. You just basically want to peel that little red, white, and blue little sticker band off. Just if there was a little piece of glue that, that adhered it on, I peeled that off. We took it outside. There was a couple little staples on the side that held the little band that got, you know, a little chin strap. I cut that off, and then I took those little staples out. But I just took it outside. I spray painted it with black, um, spray paint and now you can just embellish these any way you want to you know you can use different kinds of ribbon if you've got like little fur just make a band on it and then you can embellish any way you want to this is a little bag of i think it's called a decorative scatter or scattered decor or something but anyway it comes with little pine cones and little frosted holly i'm just going to take some sprigs of that and a pine cone and put a little bow on it and that's just as easy as that now to make hangers if you want to take your hot glue gun kind of poke a hole in the top of the hat the the plastic doesn't melt as easy as i thought it would so you know don't be afraid to put hot glue on your hat because the plastic um, didn't melt that easy but i'm just showing you could have poked a hole in it tied a little knot and then run your your little ribbon through the top but i just glued mine to the back of the little hat and I used some twine. Now the next one I make, I'm going to show you all. I took the little white hat. All I did to that was I just went outside. I spray painted it white just so it wasn't as opaque looking. It was gave it a little bit, you know, of a, a fuller white color. And then I just added some stained flower sack cloth um, band to it and some more little embellishments. And look what a cute little inexpensive um, de you know, de uh, decorative ornament now we have for our tray. I thought these turned out super cute. Now 
Now, y'all, I love Dollar Tree around Christmas time because they have a huge Christmas ornament section. We can take those ornaments and really jazz them up. So I'm just going to take one of those. It's a large silver ball. I'm going to take my iron orchid clay molds. I'm going to use the lock and key one. I'm going to brush it down with a little bit of cornstarch. Take my air dry clay, and I've got this linked in my Amazon store. You just want to take a little bit, warm it up in your hands, kind of flatten it out, and start working it down into your mold. Now, you basically just want to work it down. You want to get all the excess off around the edges that you can, and then you want to make sure that your back is flat because when you want to put it on your surface of your project, you want it to lay flat. Now, once you get it to where you feel like it is molded good, you just want to, you know, very easily work it out. And with some wood glue, you, I, I'm going to adhere it to this little ball. Now, I'll go over it with some white chalk paint, but I am going to take it outside and give it a good spray with white spray paint. Now, you don't have to use the chalk paint first before the spray paint, and you don't even have to spray paint it. But another trick here is to, to make it easy to spray paint your ball, I put it in a cup, and that really helps. Now, I'm going to make another one for you, and this one I'm going to use the bunny rabbit. I love this mold. This is also an iron orchid uh, design clay mold, and I'm just going to do the bunny, and I'm going to do it the same way that I did the, the lock. And here is the ornament real close up so you can see if you're in Dollar Tree and you see these, grab some of these. They're so much fun. And again, with some wood glue, I adhered the little bunny. I've made sure he was real flat to my surface, and then I'm just going to go over him with the chalk paint. And then again, I'm going to take it outside. I'm going to give it a good coat of spray paint. I just added some bows to them, and on the lock one, of course, I had to put a key on it, and then I just made a bow and hung some little ribbons on the bunny one. And look what a really cute little ornament that we made out of a Dollar Tree $1, you know, decorative ball ornament. So, um, like I say, Dollar Tree to me amazes me every, <laughs> every Christmas, especially with all the ornaments that they have, because they have a huge selection. Now I'm going to show you how we can make some really cute little ribbon trees. And these are very inexpensive to make. You just want a wooden dowel. And I think Dollar Tree sells these. Walmart. I think even Dollar General sells them. You want to take some wired edged ribbon. I'm showing you different options. I think both of these come from Hobby Lobby. And this one right here is Dollar Tree. So you can use any kind of wired ribbon that you have. And you want to start out with a long strand. And I'm going to start out 14 inches. Now, the first um, strand you want you, um, is going to be the longest, and that'll be the 14 inch. But the next strip, you want to take off an inch. So basically what we're doing, we're going to stagger it one inch as we go up the tree. So we'll start out with 14, then we'll do 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. And you just go all the way up, staggering off one inch until you get to the, you know, the, the desired um area of your tree where you want to stop now you know if you want a long trunk uh, if you want to leave a space at the top where you can add a different you know some kind of a topper that's you know you just have to fill it in as you desire it depending on what kind of topper you want to put on it and i'm going to show you a couple uh make this one that was more rustic with the burlaps uh, and the lace ribbon, and then after I got my ribbons tied on, I went around and I just kind of painted the stem because I know it will probably show, and I painted the top. Now I'm going to show you this little ornament again from Dollar Tree that I just pulled apart, and I'm going to embellish it with it at the top. It's going to be my tree topper, and it's kind of the only star that I really could find. So I just kind of added some hot glue, and then I'm going to go uh, on the back and just kind of secure it with more hot glue on the back. 
and I think this one turned out really cute. Now the next one I make, I'm going to make out of some more of some cream, more elegant looking kind of ribbon. It's got some pearl um, detail on the edges, and again, it worked really well. And I think I went, um, I started out with a strand 13 inches on it, and then I ended up with a six inch strip when I got to the top. When you get about six inch strips, that's about as small as I could go because, you know, by the time you tie it on, um, it's just gonna get too short. So just to give y'all some little ideas. That's some really cute little inexpensive little trees that you can make. And y'all don't forget Totally Dazzled Jewelry. This time of the year is a great time of the year to have this on hand for your projects. Because I just embellished the little cream colored tree with a totally dazzled brooch, and I think it turned out really cute. Now I made a little burlap pot and stuck this in, in there, stuck it in there just so you can kind of get an idea if you want to stand it up, make you a little, you know, it's just like a little terracotta pot, and I just put some little burlap around it, and you know, and just stand it up in there, and I think these are so cute, and they were so much fun to make, and you can use any kind of ribbons, you know, that you have, um, you know, just, just use your imagination and have fun with it. So this is a Goodwill find. I purchased this a couple years ago and I think I paid 99 cents for it. I, you know, of course the front is, it's got that on it. It's kind of like a, it's burnt into the wood, but I knew the back of it, I could make something out of it. And I've just had this in my craft supplies uh, up until now. And I finally thought, you know what, I'm getting this out. I'm going to transform it. So, you just, you know, just an inexpensive piece of aged wood. I went over it with a little bit of watered-down craft paint to stain it so I have a good base. And then I'm going to use my, my lock and key molds. And y'all, I love these. And my friend Jackie from Ruth and Ruby sent me these. And I absolutely love these. And you just go over your, your molds with your cornstarch. So, you know, once you get your clay in there, it's easy for it to lift out. And I'm just going to go over several of these because I'm going to use several of the molds in this um, in this design and you just want to take your your clay you want to work it in with your hands get it kind of warm and then just work it into your mold and you know like I always tell y'all remove as much off the excess off the edges as you can and flatten out the back really good so it will adhere to your base of your project and lay flat now, once you get it and you put that cornstarch in it, you know, it really kind of comes out once you get it started on its own. But look how cute these are. Now, I just went around and made several. I made my base of my tree. You know, it's a key, upside down key. And then I just kind of formed them on my, on my, on my wood. And I just kind of curved up those on the bottom, just kind of make it look like branches. And they were kind of curling up. And then I always adhere my clay molds with wood glue. It holds really well. Now I'm just going to go around my wood with my, my candle wax. I'm going to go over it with um, my white linen chalk paint. I'm going to distress it. I'm going to add some, so you know, a ribbon tie to it so we can hang it up. And I also added, um, y'all know, I am not tired of words and quotes. <laughs> so I, I love still adding words to things. But I added London to this because that was on that sheet of transfer that I had. So I just cut it out. I scraped it on. And it just added another little little element and detail to it. So I think this little rustic Christmas tree turned out so cute. And so many things you can make out of those clay molds for Christmas. Okay, y'all, we are at the end of the video. Do not forget to go over and join my Facebook business page at Our Green Acres. I have a goal to reach at least 10,000 followers. So I'm, I really need y'all to help me. So just go over and hit that follow button and I'll have lots of content over there. I post over there almost daily. Also, don't forget, I've got a home decor page where all of you can share all of your beautiful projects. I hope y'all enjoyed the video today and I hope y'all got some inspiration to start thinking about your Christmas list and some things that you may want to make because it's always fun to make them ahead of time before the rush sets in. So I hope y'all enjoyed it and as always, I appreciate y'all for watching. I love y'all and I'll see you in my next video. Bye y'all.